Robot vacuums have become almost a must-have household appliance these days, like a washing machine, a dishwasher, or, well, a hoover. Whilst you might be able to argue that high-end corded models still have an edge in cleaning performance over robot vacuums, there's a lot more to it than that. Unless you really enjoy vacuuming, or you can afford to have a cleaner go to your home every day of the week, then you're likely to be able to keep on top of allergens, such as dust, a lot easier by having a robot vacuum that goes off a few times a week or even every day. Also, most of them don't just vacuum anymore. They can now become fairly capable mops with various auto-emptying and self-cleaning capabilities, as you'll see with the SwitchBot S10 that we're going to be looking at today. And sure, it's not a free lunch, and you do still have to do some maintenance tasks like cleaning out hair that's stuck in the rollers or emptying dirty water tanks, but each generation is becoming more capable whilst requiring less maintenance. So let's dive into this one in a bit more detail. First off, I should mention that after reaching out to SwitchBot, asking them to send me one, they did kindly send me this SwitchBot S10 vacuum to review. I did also buy another vacuum of a different brand myself the same week on the Amazon Prime Day deals. So we'll be taking a look at this one in a future video, as well as SwitchBot S10's baby brother as well. So make sure you're subscribed for some more robot vacuum content coming soon. The capabilities and the price of this vacuum certainly puts it in more of a premium tier of robot vacuums. And as you'll see in this video, it's somewhat surprising how good it is, given that it's SwitchBot's only second ever robot vacuum. So let's talk about some of its key features. It's now become the norm to have auto empty base stations for robot vacuums, so there's no more emptying the bin after every cleaning session, which is what I have to do with my old Roomba 980. And this one comes with a four litre capacity, so you're really not going to need to empty it very often. It's also got all the features that you'd expect, such as LiDAR, a camera for object detection, and of course edge detection so that it doesn't fall down the stairs. The maximum suction power is 6,500 pascals, which is more than three times more powerful than my older vacuums that I've got, but we'll talk a bit more about this later on. If you're buying this vacuum just for vacuuming, then it will do a decent job, but really if you're going to buy this, then it should be because you've got a combination of carpet and hard floors which you need to keep clean with mopping. The mopping on this is really quite unique to others on the market. This has a roller mop which is constantly cleaned by fresh water as it's going along. This is really clever because it means that it doesn't drag a dirty mop onto the section that it's about to clean. All other vacuums only clean the mop each time they go back to the base station, meaning that you're cleaning some of your floor with a dirty mop. But this is just the start of the cleverness, because one of SwitchBot's big selling points for this vacuum is that you have a separate water station which you can plumb into your water supply. This means that you never need to fill up with any water and the dirty water goes straight down the drain. If you're daunted by the thought of plumbing this in, then they do give you an option of buying an external water tank, which sits on top of the water station so that you don't need to plumb anything in. It's no big deal filling it up and emptying the water tanks every week or so, so I'm going to use the external water tanks for now until I've decided on a final location, and then I'll probably plumb it in. Here's a little snippet of the water station in action. Going back to charge now. It's worth noting that the ward station has a small built-in battery for the Bluetooth communication and then gets powered by the robot vacuum when it's docked to it. So you don't need to worry about having power nearby, which can be a problem in things like a bathroom in the UK. It does mean that you do need to find a location for both your normal docking station and your water station. If you plumb it in, then you might be able to fit it under your kickboard, but if you're planning on using the external water tank and your home is limited on space, then it might be worth considering a different vacuum instead, which includes two water tanks and the dust bag all in one docking station. If mopping performance is important to you though, then it's definitely worth considering, because it does a good enough job on our tiles that I'll probably very rarely actually manually mop now. It's not perfect, but you're never really going to get a mop which can apply as much force as a human can to a mop. 
it did manage to remove dried on toothpaste from our bathroom floor without any problem. One thing that you can do to help is to use some floor cleaning solution. It's got a compartment on the water station where you can add some cleaning solution. Of course, Switchbot recommends using theirs and they do include some in the box, but I'm sure you could buy some cheaper non-foaming cleaning solution yourself. I found that because the mop itself cleans as it goes along, the roller is always quite clean. And once the cleaning is finished, then it goes back to the base station and there's a heater included in the base station that will dry the mop for you as well. As you can see, it's quite a fully featured vacuum, but there's still lots to discuss because I haven't talked about its navigation or the app experience yet. But firstly, here's a few tips that I've got from using this vacuum. I recommend selecting the custom cleaning mode because it allows you to set different options per room. For example, you can select two passes instead of one pass. And the second pass goes in a 90 degree direction to the first pass, helping it to cover any bits that it might have missed on the first pass. This also allows you to select the rooms which should be vacuumed and which rooms should be mopped as well. The other recommendation I have is to put the suction setting on at least strong. A lot of vacuums advertise a quiet mode so that it can run whilst you're sleeping, but the reality is, is that it's just not going to pick up enough stuff, especially on carpet, and therefore you defeat the object of buying a powerful robot vacuum in the first place. Ideally, just set it off when you go out the house and everything will be nice and clean when you get back home. Okay, so let's talk about the app experience now. I was pleasantly surprised with the setup process and the options that were available. Once you've set it up, you have the option to do a fast mapping, which quickly goes around the home mapping it out. The other option is to let it do a full clean whilst it does the mapping. The only thing that seemed to confuse it a little bit was some of the full length mirrors we've got but it doesn't affect its vacuuming properly. If you look at the map, then you can see that all of this section doesn't actually exist in my house. In addition to the mapping process, you also need to tell it where on the map the water station is located. Once you've done that, it will go there, it will dock to it, and then it will go back to the normal docking station. During the setup, I had to press the Bluetooth button on the side of the water station before it could detect where it was. And if this doesn't work for you, then give the water station a charge for a while with the USB-C port on the side. As you'd expect, the app lets you rename your rooms, split them or join them together if it hasn't figured it out properly itself. You can also create multiple maps if you've got multiple floors in your home or if you've got separate areas. A recent update also allows you to mop on different floors to where the water station is located. It has a full house clean mode, a room cleaning mode where you can set the rooms to clean and a custom mode which I mentioned earlier. This mode also allows you to choose which order the rooms are cleaned in. It also has an area mode so that you can get it to clean a specific area as a one-off task. I'm not going to go through every setting the app has to offer, but it has the features that you'd expect like setting schedules and seeing the maintenance section when you should change some of the consumable parts. And it also, of course, has the option to connect it to other ecosystems such as Google Home, Amazon and Biomatter. But you will need one of the SwitchBot hubs to be able to do this. And this is where the first disappointment is. Unfortunately, the matter integration is very limited and it just offers you an on off switch. I'm pretty sure that the matter standard does cater for a lot more features than just an on off switch. So I really hope that SwitchBot prioritizes improving this soon. Well, now let's talk about the navigation. In my experience, it does a good job of covering all of the areas that it needs to clean. And as I mentioned earlier, I really like the alternating 90 degree pattern when you do two passes. I do think that some of the logic does need a bit of improvement though. It feels like sometimes it spins around in circles to ensure it knows where it's going before it goes to the location. If I compare this to Roborock vacuums, I feel like Roborock vacuums just always seem to have a purpose and know exactly where they're going but I'm sure they'll improve this over time. I think that its obstacle detection could also do with a bit of improvement, but it's another one of those things where I'd say that most vacuums on the market still struggle avoiding wires sometimes. One of the coolest things about this robot though is that as well as it being able to see in the dark with its LiDAR, it also has two torches on the front of it. And I spent five minutes just looking at it vacuuming with the torches on because it looked so cool. 
So let's summarize the good and the bad bits of the S10. The good things are that overall it's a great vacuum and mop combo, and I wouldn't have any problem recommending it to anyone who's got the budget and the space for the docking stations. And if you plumb it in, then you only really need to think about changing the dust bag every couple of months and some general maintenance tasks. As long as you put it on the high power mode and two mopping modes, then I'd say that it does a pretty good job at both of them. The app experience is smooth and intuitive, and there weren't any major issues when setting it up or using it. And finally on the good bits, this is a robot which has additional functionality coming soon. They are going to be releasing both a humidifier and a dehumidifier, which gets filled and emptied by the S10. So hopefully I'll have a chance to look at these when they come out. Now onto the bad bits, all the things that I think they could improve. The first thing for me is that they need to tackle the matter integration. I generally only try to review products which have some element of local control or integrate into Home Assistant. And at this point, it barely ticks that box. I have found that the mopping has been good, but you do need to bear in mind that the roller doesn't go right to the edge of the vacuum, meaning that if you've got some stains right in the corner of a room, then it's not going to get to those with the mop. The other thing that I touched on is that I think they need to improve that obstacle detection, which given how new robot vacuums are for SwitchBot, I'm pretty sure you'll see a lot of updates in this area. It's got all of the sensors on board that it needs to be probably one of the best on the market in the future. If we look at the pricing of the S10 and its competing brands, the price tends to fluctuate quite a lot, but SwitchBot is a company that likes to do quite a lot of offers, and so at time recording you can expect to pay between $800 and $1000 and a similar amount in pounds or euros. I would say that this is a few hundred dollars lower than some of the other top robot vacuums out there, particularly when it comes to ones that you plumb into your house water supply. If you do want to buy it, then it'd be really appreciated if you could use my affiliate links in the description, which earn me a small commission and no extra cost to you. There will be some more robot vacuum reviews coming soon, some that solve the challenges of this one, but there's no perfect vacuum out there, so of course there are other compromises to consider with those as well. Well, that's it for this video, so thanks, until next time.